Right, hi there, good morning. Welcome to lesson three in literacy. So lesson three is to write a character description. Now there's a lot going on in today's lesson and we're expecting a fair amount of writing, at least kind of half a page from everyone today. So it's quite a big one. So let's give this a go and see how we're, we get off, all right? So I'm gonna start. We're doing a character description of the two frogs. So let's get them up. Now. I wanna talk about character descriptions in general. So if I play from here, so we're looking at writing a character description today. So to write a character description. So we wanna try and make them real, real people. So I'm gonna read you a couple from some famous authors and then I'm gonna show you how I would write one myself, okay? So firstly, We've got Harry Potter, written by J.K. Rowling. Harry had always been small and skinny for his age. Harry had a thin face, knobbly knees, black hair, and bright green eyes. He wore round glasses, held together with a lot of sellotape, because of all the times Dudley had punched him in the nose. The only thing Harry liked about his appearance was a very thin scar on his forehead which was shaped like a bolt of lightning. Now, that's an excellent character description because straight away it tells us exactly what he looks like. So we know that he's small and skinny. So you've got a little bit of alliteration there as well, small and skinny for his age. So it makes us think that whilst he might be 11 years old, he's also a bit small and skinny for his age. He's got a thin face, knobbly knees, black hair, and bright green eyes. So we can straight away think that maybe Harry Potter's not particularly good at PE, although obviously he does prove to be quite good at it later on. He's got black hair, green eyes, so we know exactly what his face looks like, we know what his body looks like, and we know what he feels like inside. Now, it's a good description, but it doesn't tell you much about his behavior. We learn that a little bit later on, okay? So we'd need to start working between the lines. So there's another one here. Uh, this is Mrs. Pratchett, uh, and it's from Roald Dahl's autobiography, Boy, and I like this one, that's good. Her name was Mrs. Pratchett. She was a small, skinny old hag with a moustache on her upper lip and a mouth as sour as a green gooseberry. So straight away, we've got the alliteration of small, skinny. We've got old hag with a moustache on her upper lip. So we straight away get an image of what she looks like. And then we've got this brilliant simile. And a mouth as sour as a green gooseberry. Now, I'm probably going to pinch that in just a second. So I'm going to take my pen and go, right, green gooseberry. I like that one. Sour as a green gooseberry and then I'll start thinking because I think traditionally you'd say sour as a lemon which is a bit cliche so maybe we need to start thinking about something else that might be quite sour she never welcomed us when we went in by far the most loathsome thing about Mrs Pratchett was the filth that clung about her her apron was gray and greasy her blouse had bits of breakfast all over it toast crumbs and tea stains and splotches of dried egg yolk it was her hands, however, that disturbed us the most. They were disgusting. They were black with dirt and grime and looked as though they'd been putting lumps of coal on the fire all day long. The mere sight of her grimy right hand with its black fingernails digging an ounce of chocolate fudge out of the jar would have caused a starving tramp to go running from the shop. So straight away, we know pretty much all we need to know about Mrs. Pratchett. We know she's disgusting, we know she's mean, she's loathsome, we know she doesn't wash her hands, we know that we probably wouldn't want to buy some sweets from Mrs. Pratchett, although for Roald Dahl he has to because she's the owner of the sweet shop. So we're going to have a go ourselves and I thought I would show you how I would start with this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna draw up my frogs. Now, from our story, we know we've got two frogs. Now, in my story that I'm gonna be writing, I've got one called Phil and one called William. Now, Phil has this kind of East London accent and he talks a bit like this, but he's quite a friendly one. 
So what I would start with straight away is I'm gonna draw a little picture of a frog. It will be awful, so bear with me. Um, literally, it looks more like a bear than a frog. However, I want to, there we go, we'll give him a tongue out as well. Now he looks more like a snake, but we'll give him a go. And then we're looking to write words about Phil. So what's Phil like? So I've already had a little bit of a go at this. I know that he's green, he's definitely green. He's definitely slimy. But I think Phil's friendly. I think he's a friendly frog. And then straight away, I think, right, friendly frog, I like that. It's got alliteration, it's a nice feel to it. So we go friendly frog. Now he's funny. So now I've almost got the power of three, haven't I? I've got friendly, funny frog, quite like that. He's charming. He's charming, he's got webbed feet. So here we're trying to describe what he looks like on the outside, but what he's also like on the inside. So we've got green and slimy, these are outside words, and then we've got charming, friendly and funny. These are inside words, aren't they? They tell us what he's like as a person. Then I've got webbed feet. I'm gonna go for strong, because I'm going for anyone who talks a bit like this must be quite strong, right? Um, he's kind. And then I'm gonna go for, because he's green, if I use one of the words from yesterday and go for emerald, then I can describe him as emerald green and then I get um, an expanded noun phrase in there as well. So I've got two adjectives, comma, noun. Right, so then I've got Phil started with some words. Then I need to think about William. I'm gonna draw him in red. So again, another frog that looks like a bear or a snake. Apologies for that. So I've got big eyes. Now, William is almost the complete opposite. So I can start straight away and go friendly. Well, he's gonna be unfriendly. He's unkind. So straight away, I've got the prefix un, which means the opposite to the words here. So already, I'm starting to get a feel about what William is like. He's unfriendly, he's unkind. Now these are inside words as well. So I'm gonna need mm, some outside words. So I'm gonna go for, let's say he's lumpy and bumpy, because I just like the sound of those together, lumpy and bumpy, they feel good. Um, he's mean which straight away leads me to think that he might be cruel. Yep. And I'm gonna go for ferocious as well, just because, well, do you know what? We always have a bit of ferociousness. So I've got these words. So I've, I've, I've brought out just a bit of words and I would really, really appreciate it if you guys did actually do this exercise. Before you start writing, really think about those frogs, okay? Give them names. Hopefully you've done the role play exercise from yesterday and really thought about what they're like. And then today, as I said, it's going to be a big lesson. You're going to have to do, write these words out for them. You can always use the internet to think of different words to mean the same thing. So you can look for synonyms. So if you go for ugly, type in ugly and then type in synonyms into your Google and see what other words you can use for it. And then we're going to have a go at writing things. So we're looking for similes. So similes are when we compare one thing to another. So we had, Roald Dahl said, um, sour as a green gooseberry. I quite like that one because we've got green because of writing with frogs. So um, you could say his eyes were as shiny as I don't know, a mirror ball, glitter, um, fireworks in the sky, anything that you can think of that would work for that. So we're looking for words, we're looking for a description for your two frogs, for inside words and outside words. So I'm going to have a go. I will make lots of mistakes and spelling mistakes, I'm sure. So we might have to go through and edit in a second. I haven't got a purple with me, so I'm going to edit in red when I go through. So um, now let's start. I'm going to start with that. It's just an easy way of getting it started. So the first frog the first 
frog. So you can see straight away, I've already got a little bit of alliteration to start with. Was a strong willed. Yeah, strong willed. So that means he's a strong character. He's strong willed. You, he's probably quite stubborn. Okay, strong willed frog with hmm, a soft green, green, let's go for emerald, emerald body. So here, just in this one sentence, I've gone for the first frog was a strong-willed frog with a soft green emerald body. So I know I've got inside words and outside words, strong-willed inside, and then soft green emerald body is outside words. So I've got that, full stop. His eyes shined like glitter yeah so then i've got my simile straight away i've got i'm comparing one thing to another okay and his hands were let's go for webbed webbed and strong. So I can see straight away, again, outside words, it's describing what he looks like. So if we just go for the what he looks like words, we've got soft green emerald body, his eyes shined like glitter and his hands were webbed and strong. So you're getting a bit of an image of what this frog looks like. So let's go for a bit more inside words. He was a, hmm, he was a, Charming, and then let's just take some of these. Friendly, so I'm gonna go for power three here. Charming, friendly, funny fellow. Because then again, I've got friendly, funny fellow, okay? Just for a little bit of alliteration. It, it sounds quite nice on the tongue, do you think? Friendly, funny fellow. I quite like that, okay? Who's oh I like this bit. I, I, I wrote this bit myself, right? A webbed and strong, he was charming, friendly, funny fan. Whose apostrophe, whose laugh um floated. So I'm carrying on with the X because I've got a bit of a frog feeling today. Floated through the air like a gentle mel, 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 melody. Okay, so now I've got the first frog was a strong-willed frog with a soft green emerald body. His eyes shined like glitter and his hands were webbed and strong. He was a charming, friendly, funny fellow whose laugh floated through the air like a gentle melody. So again, I've got another simile there, haven't I? So I've got all of my things here, so I'm going for the first frog was a strong wheeled frog with a soft green emerald body. So here I've got green emerald body. So that's an ENP, isn't it? Expanded noun phrase. His eyes shined like glitter. So eyes shined like glitter. Here I've got a simile, haven't I? Because I'm comparing one thing to another. And his hands were webbed and strong. He was a charming, friendly, funny fellow. So I'm gonna go for, I've got alliteration here. Yeah. Whose laugh floated through the air like a gentle melody. Okay, so that's my first frog done. I don't wanna go too far. I've got a few sentences there. So then I've got the other frog. I will not write in red, I'll write in green. The other frog. The other frog was, well, he's the, he's the opposite, isn't he? He was, the other frog was the complete opposite.
exit. So I could kind of use this. He was was a weak willed frog with rather than soft green emerald body i could go for he was a weak willed frog with sorry that is a t with a hard lumpy bumpy body i think even the french wouldn't want to read this frog Okay, he was slimy and posh. Slimy and posh? Yeah. Not that posh people are horrible, just, you know. Well, they're not great, are they? Right. Um, he was, sorry, he was a slimy, posh. Do I use, do I, shall I use fellow again? He was a slimy, posh. Yeah, let's go for fellow again, okay. Slimy posh fellow, who's, oh, I've got a really fancy word now, whose eyes were cold and cynical. So cynical always thinks, well, he's, he's, the bad thing's always going to happen. He's definitely a pessimist rather than an optimist like you and I, okay? We're, we're optimists, we think everything's gonna be great. A pessimist, he's gonna think everything's gonna be horrible and he's cynical. Um, right, and then when he laughed, so on the other one I had when he laughed, it kind of travels across like a melody, like a gentle melody. So here I was thinking when he laughed, it sounded bitter. When he laughed, it, sounded bitter and cruel, like a proper pantomime villain. I'm sure you could probably do his laugh. I'd like to hear it. <laughs> Something like that. I don't want to go full on evil cackle, but kind of, definitely, it's not very nice, is it? And cruel. He loved to laugh at people rather than with people, right? So here I've got, he was a slimy posh fellow whose eyes were cold and cynical. So again, I've got the alliteration there. Should have done that in red, sorry. When he laughed, it sounded bitter and cruel. A thoroughly unpleasant frog. Okay, so I'm going to read it back one more time. I know I'm droning on a little bit today. Sorry, this is one of my favourite things to do in class, and I am missing it today. So um, I'm going to give it a go, read it back again, and then you guys can get on and do this. So first things first, you want to draw both frogs, yep, and write some behaviour words and some looking words or inside words, outside words with them. And then you want to have a go at writing out your character description. So just so everyone's clear, I have drafted this my first i don't know if you can see that there are lots of crossing outs where i've changed it had a bit of a thing so i've probably drafted that twice and then tried to write it again and um, what's written here is still different to here because i've been editing as i've been going along and thinking about things that i would like you guys to add as well so i've got the first frog was a strong wheeled frog with a soft green emerald body his eyes shined like glitter and his hands were webbed and strong. He was a charming, friendly, funny fellow whose laugh floated through the air like a gentle melody. The other frog was the complete opposite. He was a weak wheeled frog with a hard, lumpy, bumpy body. He was a slimy posh fellow whose eyes were cold and cynical. When he laughed, it sounded bitter and cruel. So now I've, I've written it. If you're in my class, you'll know what I'm about to do now. I'm going to do a www. If you're in Mr. West's class or Mrs. Higginson's class, you're probably not used to doing www's as much. However, I really appreciate it when you sent it in, if you could do a www, because it means you're self-assessing your work and it shows me you uh, are appreciative of the skills we're trying to show you. Right, so www. 
that stands for what went well. And so I have described the two frogs using adjectives. So describing words, I have also used uh, similes and alliteration, so friendly frog. So you could even put friendly frog in there. And for similes, I forgot to use a sour as a green gooseberry. So feel free to borrow from Roald Dahl yourself and have a go with that one. Right, have a go. I would love to uh, read your examples. So I'm looking forward to um, reading them. And best of luck. I miss you. Stay safe. All right. Bye-bye.